For today's drug, we're going to cover atorvastatin, brand name Lipitor. The therapeutic category of this drug is that it's an antilipemic agent, more specifically, an HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor. There are several indications for this drug, the first being heterozygous and homozygous familial hypocholesteremia. Um, what it does is that it decreases the bad cholesterol, such as total C or total cholesterol, LDL-C or LDL cholesterol, ApoB or apolipoprotein B, and TGCs or triglyceride levels. It also increases the good cholesterol, HDL. The next indication is that it's used in the prevention of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. It's the primary prevention of ASCVD. It reduces the risk of MI, or myocardial infarction, and stroke, and it decreases the risk of revascularization processes. Statins also decrease angina in patients with multiple CHD, or chronic heart disease, risk factors that do not have a history of CHD. Some of the off-label uses of this drug is that it's used in transplant patients post-heart or kidney. The main dosage form is the tablet. The tablet comes in several doses, being the 10 mg, 20 mg, 40 mg, and 80 mg dose. So the dosing in regards to hypercholesteremia in adults and the geriatric population this drug is typically used in conjunction with exercise and diet, also known as lifestyle modifications, as well as it's used with other lipid-lowering therapies if monotherapy is not successful. Things to consider are the patient's age, their baseline LDL-C, their 10-year ASCVD risk, drug side effects and interactions, as well as other risk factors. When dosing for atorvastatin, you should think about the statin therapy intensities. For example, high-intensity statins can reduce LDL-C by greater than or equal to 50%, while moderate-intensity statins reduce LDL-C by 30 to 49%. So atorvastatin, doses between 40 and 80 milligrams per day, is considered high intensity, while doses at 10 or 20 milligrams per day is considered moderate intensity. Follow-up is typically done within the first one to three months after the initiation, with adjustments being made every three to 12 months after. The target dose is 80 milligrams once daily or 40 milligrams once daily with an increase to 80 milligrams if that 40 milligrams is tolerated. Now moving on to ASCVD in adult and geriatric populations. So in patients without diabetes and the age range of 40 and 75 years with an LDLC between 70 and 189 milligrams per deciliter. So there's several categories to be aware of when it comes to deciding which therapy to initiate. So for those with an ASCVD 10-year risk between 5% and 7.5%, you should initiate some type of moderate intensity therapy with the range of 10 and 20 milligrams per day with an LDLC reduction goal between 30 and 49%. For those that are greater than or equal to 7.5% to less than 20%, you should initiate moderate intensity therapy at 10 to 20 milligrams per day with that LDLC reduction goal between 30 and 49% once again. But in this scenario, it's definitely important to note that in patients that have multiple risk enhancing factors, you should consider the higher dosing of 80 milligrams. And then now the LDLC goal reduction is going to be greater than equal to 50%. So for those with an ASCVD 10-year risk greater than or equal to 20%, you initiate high-intensity therapy at 80 mg per day with the LDLC reduction goal of greater than or equal to 50%. If that patient is unable to tolerate that 80 mg per day, you can lower it to 40 mg per day. 
Regardless, you can consider starting that patient at 40 milligrams per day first, but the goal is to titrate them up to 80 milligrams per day, especially if that LDLC goal is not at that desired target. So now to go over the patients that have diabetes. So those with diabetes between the age of 40 and 75 with an LDLC between 70 and 189 milligrams per deciliter. So without any additional ASCVD risk factors, you initiate moderate intensity therapy between 10 to 20 milligrams per day with the LDLC reduction goal of 30 and 49% as the range. In patients that don't have diabetes, with an ASCVD 10-year risk greater than or equal to 20%, or if they have multiple ASCVD risk factors, you initiate high-intensity therapy at 80 mg per day with that LDLC reduction goal of greater than or equal to 50%. If that patient is unable to tolerate that 80 milligrams, once again, you can consider starting with that 40 milligrams per day first and then titrate them to 80 milligrams per day if that LDLC is not at that desired target. So now in patients with diabetes, with that LDLC between 70 and 189 milligram per deciliter range, and the age of 20 and 75 years. So here you initiate high intensity therapy at 80 milligrams per day with an LDLC reduction goal of greater than or equal to 50%. If the patient is unable to tolerate 80 milligrams per day, you lower it to 40 milligrams per day. You can consider starting the patient at 40 milligrams per day first and then titrate them to 80 milligrams per day if that LDLC is not at the desired target. So just a random dosing note in general, for each doubling of dose, the LDL is lowered approximately somewhere around 6%. So when initiating this drug or dosing for this drug in general, it's definitely important to consider certain toxicity considerations. So if there are severe muscle symptoms or fatigue, you need to discontinue the medication immediately. Then you evaluate CPK, creatinine, and then conduct a urinalysis. So if there's a mild to moderate muscle symptoms or fatigue, you discontinue the medication immediately, and then you evaluate the symptoms and the patient for any conditions that could increase muscle symptoms. So conditions such as hypothyroidism, um, or renal or hepatic impairment, rheumatoid arthritis patients, or in vitamin D deficiency. After that, then you resume at a lower dose, and then you titrate up, as the patient tolerates the medication. All throughout, you're re-evaluating the muscle symptoms and the CPK. Mechanism of Action and Pharmacology So atorvastatin, its mechanism is that it's an HMG-CoA inhibitor. The HMG-CoA enzyme, it's the rate-limiting enzyme that's responsible for the synthesis of cholesterol. So by inhibiting this enzyme, LDL receptor expression on the hepatocytes increases, which causes LDL catabolism. Other additional benefits are the endothelial function is improved, coronary plaque sites show a reduced inflammation, and platelet aggregation is inhibited. The absorption of this drug is that it has a rapid first-pass liver and GI mucosa metabolism. It's metabolized hepatically via CYP3A4, and it does not undergo enterohepatic recirculation. This medication is excreted primarily in the bile, and there's less than 2% excreted in the urine unchanged. The onset of action for atorvastatin is between 3 and 5 days, with the maximal effects typically seen between 2 and 4 weeks. The peak serum levels occur between 1 to 2 hours with a half-life of about 14 hours. This drug is highly protein-bound at greater than or equal to 98%. Side effects. So more commonly, it's diarrhea, 
joint pain, stuffy nose, sore throat, narrow pharyngitis, and UTI. Some of the other side effects are blurred vision, tinnitus, insomnia, and malaise. Drug interactions. So drugs that can increase the serum concentrations of atorvastatin are amiodarone, clarithromycin, antiviral products, itraconazole, and niacin, among others. Monitoring parameters. So a lipid panel consisting of total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, and TGC or triglycerides. When hepatotoxicity is a concern, hepatic transaminase levels should be taken. When myopathy is a concern, the CPK should be taken. Otherwise, that's not routine. Um, beyond all of that, you always want to monitor the therapy um, in regards to seeing if there are any other drugs that are affecting the metabolism, especially those that are CYP3A4 inhibitors and inducers. Patient counseling information. It's important to let the patients know that this drug is used to lower bad cholesterol, which is LDL and triglycerides. This drug also increases good cholesterol, which is the HDL. This drug slows the progress of heart disease, heart attack, and stroke. It can be taken with or without food, and the time of day does not benefit the patient with this drug. The manufacturer states that you do not crush or break the tablet, but there's no safety or efficacy concerns that are noted. So in pregnancy, this drug is absolutely contraindicated. You want to discontinue in patients between one to two months prior to females trying to conceive.